Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I have eight positive tips to greater peace and calm. And after the last episode, you, I hope, are more inspired to find greater peace and calm to help you keep your nervous system back into its parasympathetic state of peace and calm, of relaxation, of being able to rest and digest and recover. So how can we do that? How can we get there? Have you ever really opened your mind to the valuable impact that positive thinking could have on your day-to-day life? And I don't mean Pollyanna or sticking your head in the sand. We are all adults here and we are able to know that there are things we have to take care of, challenges we have to deal with. And we do that. We work hard, but we can do it with all kinds of attitudes. And so I'm wondering if you've ever really opened up your mind to the idea of the impact that positive thinking could have on your day-to-day life. When you develop a truly positive mindset, you set yourself up for a happier and less anxious life. With the stressful and hectic pace of our lives, we are always on the move. We're always accomplishing something, writing a list or looking at a screen, running people around, finishing projects. And when we're not doing those things, we're thinking of the things to do next, right? So it's stressful. It's a hectic pace in our lives. We can have a more joyful existence. And this will be a welcome change. All the running around, all the thinking, all the planning, all the doing, to be able to do these things and have a positive attitude and positive thinking will be a welcome change inside your nervous system. It might take some practice to change because we are all in thought patterns that most of us have been in for a very, very long time. So to shift from a negative thought pattern into positive ideas that serve you better might take some practice, but I know that you can do it. And I know that it will make a major impact on your life. So if you can apply these strategies I'm going to talk about today, you can invigorate your life. You can give it more zest. First off, number one, Tell yourself that you can do it. Sometimes a simple thought that you can repeat over and over can get you through a grueling or challenging experience. We talk about mantras a lot here, and we talk about, you know, little prayers that we can say. And sometimes when you're doing a difficult task, just saying, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, would keep you striving to get through it. And get to the end of it, to accomplish what it is you are trying to get through. The second one I have for you is I want you to think of yourself as strong. How do you vision yourself? Do you picture yourself as strong and able? Or do you picture yourself as a victim and unable to stand up and do what needs to be done? When you're engaging in a physical activity, think to yourself, I am strong. I can do hard things. I can finish this job because of my strength. And if you are doing mental or emotional things, I want you to tell yourself the same thing. I am strong. I can do hard things. I can finish this job because of my strength. 
And I have a little story I will tell you about my walks. So there is a particular park that I walk at that it begins going up a, a gentle hill. It's a hill, but it's not it's not real super steep. And when you get to the top of this hill, you have a choice. You're at a T, you can go left or right. If you go left, you go down a very, very long hill. And it's it's pretty steep. And if you go to the right, you go up a very, very long hill, and that one is steep. And so what I have taught myself to do is get to the top of the gentle hill, and then I have my decision to make. And I have taught myself to generally, I would say 95% of the time, take the hard road. I am strong. I can do hard things, and I can climb this hill because of my strength. And I may be huffing and puffing when I get to the top of it, but I am never disappointed that I took that hill. Never. I am always happy that I took that hill, even though I'm huffing and puffing and sweating. That's kind of what I was out there to do, right? So remind yourself, you are strong. You can do hard things. The third one I have is I want you to write about what is good about you even though it might feel really strange to do it. Get your journal out and start listing your positive attributes. Do some bragging about yourself. If you're waiting for someone else to do the bragging about you, forget about it. Do it yourself. You know you. You do know what you're good at. So write it down. It may feel funny, but I'm telling you, you're going to look at yourself differently when you start to see my goodness, I actually have all kinds of great stuff that I can do. The fourth one I have is acknowledge that you will do something. So this is rather than being disappointed about something that you didn't do very well, I want you to vow that you will work to achieve something in the future. And I want you to use words like I am, not I'm going to, but I am. You're not going to say, I'm going to try, or I might give it a go. I want you to state firmly, I am following through, or I am walking this hill. It's a positive and affirmative state that we put ourselves in when we say, I am. Practice thinking and speaking in these terms. The more definitive you can be, the more likely your life will advance in positive ways. We can change our language and it can make it work for us. I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsors and we have Thesis with us. Anyone who is struggling with focus, energy, or motivation, I want to tell you, it's not you, it's your brain. Thesis helps you take control of your mind to create habits that last and get a little help if you need a boost. Take their three-minute quiz online. This is an awesome little quiz. And Thesis will then recommend high-quality, no-tropic formulas that are unique to you and your goals. It's easy, it's fun, and I think you're going to be kind of amazed at the outcome of the quiz. The four different formulas I received after taking the quiz are energy, clarity, logic, and creativity. You take one formula for six days, then you take a day off and begin the next formula, keeping track all the while of how you feel. Right now, Thesis is offering our listeners 10% off your first starter kit when you visit takethesis.com slash ACP. Go to takethesis.com slash ACP to take this quiz and discover your unique nootropic combination and save 10% off on your first starter kit. That's takethesis.com slash ACP. Make sure to use our URL to let them know we sent you. And Fastic is with us today. We've all done intermittent fasting, whether you know it or not. It's not intimidating. It's not hard. It's like going out to dinner in the evening and waking up late the next morning. So you had a long time in between your meals. You fasted. That's all it is. 
Intermittent fasting is doing the same thing, only we do it consciously. Many people download the app for weight loss, but that's not all Fastic has to offer. I downloaded it because I have done intermittent fasting for various reasons, and it's a great way to get your mind off of the clock. Fastic app provides small daily tasks that support holistic health. From better nutrition to better sleep, Fastic presents new information in a way that isn't overwhelming. What I love again about the Fastic app is the timer in the app tracks your eating and fasting windows so you don't need to keep an eye on the clock. It will let you know what's going on in your body during your fast and tell you when you are ready to eat. For more support during your eating window, Fastic has tons of recipes and nutritional guidance in their Fastic Academy, and it's all verified by experts. Go to Fastic.com or click the link in the show notes. That's the easiest way to download the app and use code ACP to get $50 off a one year of Fastic Plus. That's F A S T I C dot com or click the link in the show notes to download the Fastic app and get $50 off your first year with promo code ACP. So the next idea I have for you as a tip for more peace and calm in your life is to take a walk. Again, something as simple as walking around the block. I don't know how big your block is or how small your block is, but how long has it been since you used your body, your energy to go for a walk, whether it's fast or slow, whether it's running or jogging, you'll feel good. You'll feel invigorated and accomplished when you get it done. Of course, take heed of your body's health and your doctor's advice on exercise, but you know what I mean. Use your body. If you can't walk for very long, walk for 15 seconds while you count under your breath, right? And then rest and then walk a little bit more. Start slow. See if you can work up. Be grateful and feel accomplished for any little bit that you do. This is an awesome way to feel good about yourself. Next, I want you to set aside some time each day to work toward an important goal. You must have a particular goal that's super important to you, but you feel like it ends up at the bottom of the list. No matter what your goal is, I want you to feel psyched, psyched up about doing it. And if you do one thing to work on it every single day, you will eventually accomplish this goal. It will give your day a positive lift to know that you accomplished something toward that goal. Try it and see. Start off by the first thing that you could do is take your big goal and break it down into smaller goals. That could be the one thing you did for it today. And maybe the next day you break those pieces down into smaller, really bite-sized, doable items that you can put on your to-do list. For example, if your goal is to get a new job, get your journal or a new notebook and jot down each day with the date what you did toward getting a new job. Maybe you made a phone call. Maybe you established a contact on the internet. Maybe you emailed a headhunter. Maybe you started your LinkedIn profile. Just do one thing every day to achieve your goal. The next one I have for you is to have a sense of humor. Now, you really can do this. We do this by letting go of judgment, actually. You can't be judgmental about what's going on in your life and and have a sense of humor at the same time. We can let go of the judgment and have a little bit of a laugh, even if it's at our own expense. It's okay. Take, for example, if you ordered something for your home, like a new bed, and they delivered it, and it actually doesn't fit in the room when the guys bring it. You can have a laugh about it. You really can. I know you're thinking, oh my God, like recognize that it's not an unsolvable issue. You can return the bed. The guys can take it back with them. You can shop for another one. 
I know it's going to cost you time and money and energy, but it was a solvable issue. And this is where we want to start teasing out in our lives and we can do it with humor. What is a real problem and what is not? This is stuff we have power over. We can make these changes. Yes, we are inconvenienced, but that never killed anybody. But when we act as if everything is life ending, if we don't get it done, when we act like it's live or die, that the bed didn't fit, our body takes a toll. Because with our thoughts and our attitude, we're saying that there is a big problem and that it's life or death, and we set off our fight or flight. Next thing you know, our body's stressed. We do this many, 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 many times during the day. They're so small, we don't pay attention to them, but they add up. They build up on each other. And that's when people say, oh, but my anxiety came out of the blue. No, it didn't. We have to pay attention to where we're acting like things are life or death, or where we can let go, be non-judgmental, and insert a little bit of humor. The next one I have for you is to tell yourself that you can handle something if it doesn't work out. This is super powerful, and I hope that you will try it. Being positive means that you'll land on your feet regardless of what happens. I really want you to tell yourself this. Even in the most difficult situation, remind yourself, I will land on my feet. You will get through it. And when you truly know this and live life as if you believe it, you will be one of the most positive people alive. You can land on your feet. You have landed on your feet. So don't act as if you're going to die with every problem that comes up, with every decision that needs to be made. We have to put them in the right category. This is not life or death. Very few things are going to ever in your life are going to fall into that life or death situation category. So don't put everything in there. Stop stressing your body to the point of adding pain to your body over things that you do have control over. And things that you don't have control over, you know already what I'm going to say about that. You can let those go. If you don't have control over it, let it go. If you do have control over it, decide how important it is, right? Everything isn't life or death. So stop telling your body that it is. Stop living in that fight or flight. You don't have to fight over the bed not fitting in the room. I just moved, actually. I had to move because the house I was renting went up for sale. So I had to move quickly to a little cottage here on Maui and It has really tiny bedrooms. There's no rentals available. So I had to take the best one that I could find. And I have two tiny little bedrooms. My bed has to be taken apart to move and put it into the bedroom that I thought I wanted my bed in. All set up. It is only like five weeks later, I decide it's not working out in that bedroom. I have to switch bedrooms. Now, it isn't a matter of just pulling the bed out and putting it in another room. The entire bed has to be taken apart to be put into the other bedroom. And not to mention, it's like a puzzle. It's such a tiny place to move one thing. You have to move other things. Now, I'm even smiling as I say this because it was not life or death. It was a choice. I decided I need to put the bed in the other room. And so I did it. I didn't act like it was a life or death thing. I didn't kick and scream and get all depressed. And why did I do that? Beat myself. No, just go with it. I actually had to laugh because I had to have somebody come and help me do it. So I had to have the gal that helps me with her power tools come over and help me get that bed apart and move it. But it's okay. It was something I could handle. It was something I could do, and we had a good laugh about it as we were doing it. 
So tell yourself you can handle things. And if things don't work out, regardless of what happens, you can handle it. When you begin to refocus your life toward positivity, you'll discover a passion for life you've not really experienced before. You'll bring vim and vigor to your life each day through practicing these positive methods and mantras. I really hope that you will give it a try. Why not? Before I read today's quote, I was wondering if you prefer the show without ads, or perhaps you might like to have access to the entire back catalog of over 600 episodes. Maybe you'd like some bonus meditation episodes. All of that and more are available for five bucks a month with our premium Supercast membership. Go to anxietycoaches.supercast.com and join us ad-free today. The link will be in the show notes. And now for today's quote. Believe in yourself and all that you are. Know that there is something inside of you that is greater than any obstacle. And that's from Christian D. Larson. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com. 